always trying to get better at editing, right? You could click random buttons and hope for the best, or you can learn these five overpowered editing tricks that are actually worth learning. So let's open up Premiere. Trick number one, drink a lot of coffee. Just kidding, I, I can't function without it. Now, the real trick number one, achieve consistent color grading. So your clips look very different from each other, like this. Yeah, that's because you skip the most important part. Before color grading any of these, only color grade the first clip. Let's decrease the temperature a little and perhaps mess around with the contrast and lighting a bit. There you go, that's better. Once that's done, go to the program monitor and make sure comparison view is enabled. Now you'll see two previous Views. This one is a reference window. You can scrub through your timeline using the play in here. So make sure the first clip that you already graded is right here as a reference clip. Then for the second one, make sure the play in the timeline is on the clip that you want to create next. Now make sure that video is selected and go to the Lumetri color panel. Now the first thing you can do is unfold the color wheel step and click on the apply match button. This usually doesn't work well, but it gives you a great starting point. From here, I usually tweak the tint and lightness until your second clip looks like it was shot in the same space as your reference video. And as you can see, this is a big success. Keep doing that for all your clips. This trick really helps you achieve that professional look we're all looking for. Number two, adjusting the lightning. Another grading trick. What a coincidence. Let's say I have this shot of my face, but I think the right side is a little bit too dark than I originally wanted. Well, you can always increase the blacks and shadows, but that will make your video look more flat. And not only will it impact your face, but also so everything in the background. Instead, increase the shadows anyways, until you're happy with the result. Don't look at the background or anything. Then go to the effect controls and click the pen tool on the Lumetri color effect. That will create a mask. Now in the program monitor, draw a mask around the dark space of your face and neck. When you close up the mask, go to the mask feather property and play around with it. Feel free to move your mask around and adjust it. Now head back to Lumetri and start playing with the lightning controls again. You can play with all of them and there you go. Your video looks perfect now. I have done this trick so much and it actually saved my footage many times. Number three, adding zoom effects. Now, well, I actually use AutoCut for that. This is a must have plugin for anyone who uses Premiere. So once you have it opened, you can see that there's a lot going on in here. This tool can automatically cut away silences, add animated captions and so much more. But I actually wanna show you auto zoom. What I always do first is disable the audio tracks I don't need. Then you wanna tell AutoCut where you want the zooms to be applied. I usually make an in out point selection in the timeline and then go back to auto cut. Now I click in out points or you can also apply this one on your entire timeline. All right, click validate sections. Next, you can choose a zoom rhythm. I leave this as it is, but you can make it less or more intense. Now here you can choose what triggers auto cut to apply a zoom. Cut will always be enabled, but you can also let it zoom in when you start or stop speaking or at a specific emotion. They are using AI to find these emotional moments. Next, frame your yourself by dragging the box to your face. And for me, a zoom level of 135 is super useful. Then with the zoom styles, I usually only have jump cut enabled, but feel free to enable smooth zoom or snap in as well. Then you can make a track selection and once that's done, click on apply zoom and look at this video. This saves me so much time and now I can focus on the creative part instead of a boring and repetitive task. Thank you so much. Now I really hope you guys will try out the free version and let me know what you think. I would really appreciate that. Now, if you want to skip the free trial, you can get 20% off by clicking the link down below. Now let's get to number four, keyframes controls. Well, these beautiful keyframes worked really well in 2005. Today, they just don't cut it. Now, if you don't have After Effects and still want to use them, this is how you should do it. So, when you expand the keyframe properties, an actual curve will show up. Again, don't get me wrong, this is trash, but it's all we have. Just for reference, this is how it looks like in After Effects. Much better. Adobe, please update the curves. So, look at this simple position animation. Well, you can easily smooth it out by right-clicking the first keyframe and easing it out. Then right-clicking the last keyframe too and easing that one in. That's better already, but not amazing. Well, you can actually pull the levers of these keyframes to control the amount of easing. For example, if I pull the first one and the last one, the animation will look a lot better. But now, why is this not good? Well, for instance, it's not easy to use. I mean, look at it. Second, imagine you want to create a position position and rotation animation at the same time, like this. Well, if we want to ease these keyframes, there's no way to ease the keyframes at the same time. So your animation will always look a little bit off. In After Effects, you can just select all the keyframes that you want to ease and bam, 
Pulglev. It's that simple. Number 5. Use the free plugin called Portal. It's basically an empty panel, but here comes a trick. When you drag a folder with assets or music, sound effects, anything, in here you can always access that folder in Premiere, no matter which project you're in. This way you won't get any duplicates and you can always pull assets out of the same place. This has really been a lifesaver for me. Now that's not the only free plugin you should use. In this video right here you will learn about 5 free plugins that I'm using on a daily basis and I highly recommend you click on that video. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you AutoCAD so much for sponsoring this video. Goodbye!